Hello, everybody. Welcome. John Arvosa is here in D.C., as in Washington, D.C. How is everybody? I'm going to load up on TikTok as we talk, talk. Droop. I was going to do my asthma inhaler before I started, but I forgot. Oh, let's see who we got on TikTok first. Deep, 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 if anybody. <laughs> this is how TikTok's being lately. Let's see. Is TikTok going to let anybody come on? Apollo, you are the first to join us. Welcome. And welcome everybody else on TikTok. Hello. Hello, hello, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn as well. Woo. Hey, Ashley. Hey, everybody. Everybody, I, I can see you all. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, as always, if folks want to just sort of check in, say where you're from. Yeah, cue the Russians. Uh, we go for the first five minutes just to have folks introduce themselves because that way it gives a little bit of time for people to filter in who are getting the notice a little bit late, which seems to happen sometimes with these services. Uh, what am I looking at here? I don't know what I'm looking at here. My brightness on my computer I'm looking at. There we go. There we go. Oh, Connecticut. Hey, Ashley, Mike, everybody. Annette, how are you? Oh, where is everybody? Oregon, South Carolina, North Carolina. Oh, man. Oh, boy. So I'm doing better. I've got my asthma medicine ordered. I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you, that T. Clow. So that's coming in tomorrow, we hope. So I'll be actually, I'm going to do this anyway before we start. I was going to do my inhaler just to be safe. The allergies have been driving me bonkers. Thank you, Honey Bear, for that. <laughs> As I said, it's very funny on my TikTok now. I mean, now that my TikTok is actually on my uh, iPad, to be able to see this stuff for real, it's really funny to see the things you guys buy. It wasn't nearly as impressive. Hello, Michigan. It wasn't nearly, ah, oh, Chambéry, France. Salut. It wasn't nearly as impressive on the uh, phone as it is here with you guys on the iPad. Oh, I got my dog water. I did pretty good today. My dog's water. My microphone is plugged in. It's on my lapel. Hey, hey, oh, salut, d'autres français ou, ou c'est le même? Oh non, c'est l'autre français. Ah, Guy. Guy or Gig. Gig. Mais Gig, c'est un homme. J'ai un ami Hugues. C'est pour ça que je crois que peut-être Gig, c'est un homme aussi. Mais je connais pas. Oh yeah, my asthma's been crazy for a week now. Hey, Solomon. Oh, Solomon. Oh my God. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, my God. Not that I see any of the MSFSers anymore. We went to graduate school together. He's over on LinkedIn. Oh, my God. I don't see – well, I see very few people. I, I just – actually, Marion Hagler, who's a friend of mine, we've been staying in touch lately, and she's been coming in on these occasionally too. Uh, just to remind folks, we go till around another two or three minutes just to give folks time to filter in because it can take a few minutes. But in the, uh, in the interim, we – uh, we just have folks sort of introduce yourselves, say where you're from, kind of fun to have people do that. And I think it's just fun to see every, where everybody's from. Ooh, oh, that's right. And I was going to do my asthma inhaler because allergies have been so bad in Washington, D.C. for the past week that I've been going nuts. Went to the doctor today, got medicine coming tomorrow, but this helps. <sighs> oh, that's one. Nope, oh, small crowd on YouTube. Maybe, maybe. TikTok is being a little better than it was on the weekend. TikTok is still playing some games with my uh, my audience. Um, the weather, we had a bad storms last night, which my dog was not happy about. Uh, we're going to go another two minutes, folks, just of introductions here of people introducing yourselves. That's why if you're just coming on, we are not talking about Ukraine yet because we're waiting two more minutes just for, so folks can filter in. But we're introducing ourselves and saying where we are from. I'm in Washington, D.C., but it's kind of fun just to watch the rest of the audience and see where folks are from. Flower Lady, thank you for that. I do. I always love watching that little. <laughs> Someday I'm going to remember what that thing is called. I keep wanting to say starfish and sea anemone, sea, and, sea anemone, and it's not. Thank you for the hat. I will never remember. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. That's what it's called. God, crazy. Oh, I know, Solomon. If you're here in town, let me know. I would love to see you. Or mess well. I assume we're friends on, on on LinkedIn. If not, I'll have to find you or you message me or friend me or whatever it is, and I'll check on on uh, on LinkedIn. All right, guys, one more minute, and then I will start. And we hope to God there's no thunder tonight because we had thunder last night, and my dog was a disaster. Thank you, Iggy, for that. <laughs> um, my dog was an absolute disaster. I'm in Washington, D.C., 
and it's been very hot here, but today was 70 degrees all day, a little humid, but I don't care because it's not 90. So, all right, I will start doing my introductions for the show. Um, what we do here is I go for maybe the first 20, 25 minutes and I talk about the latest news from Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of news today, so let's see what happens. Oh, and I know TikTok isn't notifying you. There's nothing I can do about it. It's very annoying. Um, thank you, Baby Shoe, for that. It's very annoying. TikTok isn't notifying people. Some people get notified, others don't. What I recommend for folks is um, we are now sticking with a set schedule. So Monday to Friday, this is at 6 p.m. Eastern Time US, midnight Paris. Saturday and Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time US, 8 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. Paris. Just remember that's the time, put it in your calendar, uh, and that's the best way to remember. Because that's what I do actually on TikTok anyway. Whenever I'm looking to see somebody on TikTok, um, I just put it in my calendar and I go, oh, shoot, Crypto Wendy, who I love. Uh, you know, Sunday at one o'clock, I got to join her. But I never try to do the, the notification anyway. So, all right, guys. So let's dive in. So uh, I'm going to do an introduction of the news. I've got a decent amount of news today. I may have to cut some of it, actually. At first, I was afraid there might not be enough. And it's a lot, but it's a lot of good, interesting news. Some bad, but a lot of interesting news. Um, I will go through that. Then we'll do the question and answer. The question and answer will go till around quarter after the next hour. So we'll be here for a good hour, 15, hour, 20 minutes. And then we usually just hang out for about 10 minutes afterwards and just shoot the bull, which has been a lot of fun too. Um, for questions on TikTok, enter them at the bottom of the screen where it says Q&A. And that way, all your questions will pop up in a row for me, which is really nice and easy. On YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, you can't ask questions, unfortunately. But for the other three, you can enter questions just in the Q&A box or the, the comment box on the bottom. And uh, on YouTube, as always, if you ask a super chat question, which you've got to buy, that's the way TikTok works, um, you are actually giving a gift to the creator when you do that. So I, as a thank you, will get to your question as the next immediate thing I get to or I'll try to at least. It's almost a 99% guarantee, uh, just as a thanks. And on TikTok, all the funny stuff you guys threw on the screen is also well appreciated because that stuff is also uh, also basically supports the creators, which is something I didn't realize until I got further on TikTok. So thank you for those too. I will at least try to do a shout out when you give me the funny little goofy stuff too, <laughs> which I appreciate. All right, guys, uh, let's dive right in. So you know what I'll do? People had asked... Uh, for me to do a recap when I start the show and then when I finish, just to give you an idea of what the news is today. And let me do that because that might be the nicer way of doing it. So these are the stories I'm going to try to cover today. If we start going long, I may cut a couple, but these are the stories I think were important today, okay? First of all, uh, tribunals for the Azov style, folks. The Russians are talking now about having military tribunals. In other words, uh, putting the, the Azov style steel plant survivors on trial. Uh, the 21-year-old, <coughs> excuse me, the 21-year-old Russian soldier who killed a 62-year-old civilian on a bike in a war crime was sentenced to life. Uh, Lithuania is proposing an idea for how to get Ru uh, Ukrainian grain out. Uh, Starbucks, good news from Starbucks. Uh, somebody important at the UN quit for the Russians and caused a big stink. I got a lot of good quotes from this guy. Um, gorillas. There are signs of gorillas operating. And when we say gorillas, we mean partisans. We mean citizens that are taking up arms and helping out in occupied parts of Ukraine, which is great news. Uh, Poland cutting off natural gas. The Czech Republic is sending new aid as well to Ukraine. So is Denmark. Uh, Germany. Germany might be being bad again. <laughs> So we're going to talk about Germany, did some bad things, and then Germany is also announcing some possible good things with, which re, with regard to the oil embargo of Russia. Um, some breaking news on cryptocurrency in Russia, some news on Aeroflot and the sanctions, and, and then I want to talk about just, if we have time, I'm going to mention three other non-Russia stories that were big in the news today, one with Taiwan and Biden one with uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook Meta. And then if we've really got time, I'm going to show you a video of a Russian, of a Ukrainian soldier, excuse me, and a kitten that's really freaking adorable. But let's first start with uh, the tribunals. So the Russians today, Russian media, I believe it's Izvestia, which is one of the big 
you know, the big publications, came out and said that the Russians are going to have uh, military tribunals for the Azov-style defenders, who you'll recall are the Ukrainian fighters who were defending that steel plant for two and a half months. <laughs> I mean, really, really ridiculous what these guys pulled off. These were <clears throat> around a thousand men, maybe 2000, right? The number kind of goes back and forth, but a thousand men or so that um, held off 12 to 14,000 Russian troops for two and a half months. And the only reason they gave up is they were running out of food and water and maybe munitions too, but they didn't give up because they were beaten. They weren't actually beaten, but they just, because they were cornered in this plant, they couldn't get more supplies. Amazing what these guys did. Well, the Russians are furious at them. Um, the Russians, as you also may know, for a while have been trying to claim that these guys are actually, and we try not to use the keyword because we don't want to get in trouble with TikTok and YouTube, but let's, uh, we, we call them Yahtzees, which rhymes with the N word, not that N word that they are, the Yahtzees, the Russians claim they are. And because Russia also claimed it got involved in the war to stop the Yahtzees running the Ukrainian government, it was pretty much a done deal. I mean, I, I predicted this, that they were going to try these guys. They were never going to let them go. They were going to say, look, we finally caught the Yahtzees, and now we're going to put them on trial. So let's see what happens next. I'm not sure what pressure the world can put on Russia because we're already putting pressure, but not good news for these guys. Uh, the 21-year-old got life in prison. The 21-year-old Russian soldier who shot to death a 62-year-old man riding a bicycle. He was driving by with friends in a car they stole and the uh, friends, military friends, his military comrades said, hey, shoot that guy in the head, shoot the guy. And the soldier shot the guy in the head riding the bike and killed him. He ended up confessing. He was uh, sentenced to life in prison. And I mentioned yesterday, the wife of the gentleman who was killed, thank you for that, Louis. The wife of the gentleman who was killed said she would be fine with him being exchanged for the Azov style defenders. And I'm sure my guess is she'd probably be fine with him being exchanged for other Ukrainians, which I think is a really generous spirit considering what, what this man did to your husband. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, what are you? Oh, this represents a sorting hat from TikTok. Thank you, Nicolina. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, let me just look here. Next, next issue, Lithuania. This was a very interesting proposal I just saw about an hour ago. Lithuania is proposing a coalition of the willing basically a coalition of countries that want to get together and uh, escort Ukrainian grain ships out of southern Ukraine. And the idea is to help Ukraine sell its harvest, but just as important, it is to help feed the world because there is serious concern about hunger in the Middle East, in uh, Africa, and possibly Latin America or Asia. I don't remember the third area of the world they were worried about, but if the Russian grain harvest doesn't get to them. I mean, serious concerns about international hunger happening. And what the Uk Lithuanians were saying was they need a coalition of countries willing to do this. It will not be NATO. NATO countries are welcome, but it will not be NATO you know, because they're members of NATO. Uh, the Brits said they're willing to do it. And other countries that would basically get together, escort these ships, possibly even have a naval escort. They're trying to talk to the Turks now to see what would happen because the Turks, as you know, uh, control the entrance to the Black Sea. So anyway, very interesting proposal uh, an idea whose time has long been coming, and it's good to hear that they're considering something. Uh, Starbucks has announced today that it is gone for good from Russia. This is great news. Uh, just to put a little more nuance on this, this goes one step beyond what was happening already. Okay, Starbucks and a number of countries pulled out of Russia. Basically, I shouldn't have even said pull out. They they ceased their business operations. They paused their business. Thank you for that, the best. They paused their business operations. And now what Starbucks is doing is exactly what McDonald's announced last week. They're pulling out for good. Starbucks has 130 shops or whatever you call stores in Russia, and they're yanking them. They're going to sell them to somebody else. They're going to stop providing uh, any of their goods so no longer will it be able to not just be called Starbucks, but it won't get any of the Starbucks coffee, the Starbucks food, any of that stuff. Um, that's a big deal because it, it means a problem for Russia in the long term. Because now it's not a matter of, oh, just wait until the war is over and then business will come back. These guys are gone and they're not coming back for a while. So that's good news. And hopefully it'll add momentum to other people leaving. Now, 
Uh, sorry, Tyson, Ann, I missed your question earlier. Even if a soldier was traded, um, do you think they'd kill or praise him? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. You're talking about the she's talking about the 21 year old who was sentenced to life. You know, currently they're claiming. Well, currently they're claiming it's fake. I mean, the Russians comment on the trial of this kid who shot this poor uh, this poor 62 year old Ukrainian man to death. Currently, the Russians are saying it's a fake trial. It's fake charges. So I don't think they're going to punish him when he comes back. I think they're going to make this guy a hero. They need heroes. Thank you, Johnny. They need heroes right now, right? You know, uh, morale is is going through the floor. People in the country, I think, are growing increasingly worried. We're having some reports of that. Um, there's clearly death they're finding out about. Thank you, Cammie. Uh, they're finding out about the deaths and the wounded because they're literally seeing bodies come back or soldiers come back without limbs. So you need to buck up morale. You need a hero. You don't need a criminal. So I don't, even if the Russians, thank you for the hat, Callie, even if the Russians want to go after him, not that I think they would want to. Why would they care? You know what I mean? He killed a Ukrainian. That's what they've been doing across the country. They need a hero now, so they're going to turn him into a hero. Um, UN, the UN counselor. This is a really interesting story, and I'm going to give you some quotes on this just because I think it's pretty significant. Um, a middle-level UN employee, United Nations of Russia, uh, and but but he's been in the Russian Foreign Service, the Russian Diplomatic Corps, for 20 years now. So this guy is not like some kid, okay? He resigned today and sent a letter. Thank you, Johnny. He sent a letter to uh, to the other uh, to the other diplomats and saying, "Oh, sorry, that was TikTokarian. Thank you for that, you too." And um, in it, he said, among other things, "Let me read you just a little bit of this." Um, for 20 years of my diplomatic career, I have seen different turns of our foreign policy, but never have I been so ashamed of my country. Uh, those who conceived this war want only one thing, to remain in power forever, live in pompous, tasteless palaces, sail on yachts comparable in tonnage and cost to the entire Russian Navy, enjoying unlimited power and complete impunity. To achieve that, they are willing to sacrifice as many lives as it takes. Um, he then goes on to say that it was the Russian foreign ministry that helped mislead Putin into the war, which is kind of interesting because a lot of us were trying to figure out what was going on here. You know, was Putin told the truth and he just simply refused to believe it or what happened? Well, this guy, and mind you, this guy's life is on the line right now. So I, I have a hard time believing he would lie about this aspect of it. This guy says that um, the Russian diplomats got it wrong. They got the West wrong. They basically got everything wrong. We diplomats of the foreign ministry are also at fault for this, for not passing along, thank you, the information that we should have for smoothing it out and presenting it as though everything was great. Instead of presenting your own analysis as objectively um, as possible, along with your suggestions on how to proceed, we often presented information that was certain to be liked. That was the that was the main criterion. Anyway, I just thought that was very interesting, but and and frankly, like as I said, a very interesting insight as to how the war happened. Now, it's not really clear that Putin. It wasn't just the foreign ministry. I've raised this with you guys before. Um, <laughs> thank you, Akila. I raised this with you guys before that there was a report about two weeks or so before the war started. And it was that uh, Russian military that, uh, leader that was in the area was calling back to Moscow and his communication was intercepted. And they heard him saying, we don't have enough men to start this war. And this was the same thing that uh, the U.S. experts were saying on TV. I remember this, uh, General Hurtling and a number of the former generals who I really like, they kept saying, there aren't enough men. This is crazy. And a lot of us were kind of watching them going, I mean, it just seemed a little odd because we we're like, well, why would Putin invade without enough men? But our experts were saying there aren't enough men. This this uh, head or cur whoever this guy was, colonel or whatever he was, calling back to Moscow, was saying the same thing. So it wasn't just, thank you, Akila, it wasn't just the foreign ministry causing problems. Clearly, defense, ex uh, the actual def uh, Russian military guys had called to Moscow and said what the problem was, and Moscow didn't listen. So, you know, thank you, Marcy. Um, gorillas. As I said, this story I think is important too because it shows, it's another example of Ukrainians starting to fight back. And that's good because this suggests in other areas this will be happening. So there was an explosion in the town of 
and Nerhodar, southern Ukraine, um, the self-proclaimed mayor, the self-proclaimed mayor. So basically, this is a Ukrainian collaborator who declared himself mayor of the Russian-occupied town and said, hey, Russia, I'm going to work with you, right? Um, so the self-declared mayor, Andrei Shevchek, and his bodyguards, well, his bodyguard, because his bodyguards didn't help in this case, his bodyguards were injured in a blast at the entrance of his apartment building on May 22nd. So that would be, oh, that's yesterday. Um, the... And Nehodar mayor, the actual, I like this, that the actual mayor, Dmitry Orlov, confirmed the accident and said they are being treated as a local hospital. Quote, we can conclude that the collaborator was the target, said Orlov. So anyway, I thought that was kind of cool news. But again, it's not just a matter of the schadenfreude of this guy getting in trouble, but it shows that in these occupied towns, you've got a resistance that has weapons, they have bombs, they have the bomb-making ability, they have the ability to plant the bombs, to go after leaders. That's going to send a message to other people who are thinking of collaborating. So, right, it's it's a whole uh, rubric of the impact that has, which is good news. Uh, Poland cut off natural gas imports from Russia today. Uh, they did that early. Poland was cutting off natural gas imports at the end of the year when the contract ran out, but they decided to do it early because they said they just don't trust the Russians because obviously the Russians were probably cut off Poland early just to be obnoxious. So they turned it around and, you know, they did a, they did a, you can't fire me, I quit to the Russians and cut off the money early, which is great. Because again, every time these things get cut off, it's that much less money that Russia gets. Important things. Uh, the Czech Republic is sending helicopters, tanks, and rocket systems to Ukraine. Oh, I saw the Borg thing. Thank you there. Um, the Denmark is sending Harpoon anti-ship missiles, which is really nice. Um, people were asking, you know, depends how many, but uh, Harpoons are really good things to send. And anti-ship missiles become very interesting. Obviously, when it comes to uh, working out the... Uh, when it comes to, what was I going to say? So I'm like, I saw somebody post in uh, Russian or Ukrainian, but considering there's a Ukrainian flag and and his name is the Ukrainian URL, I'm going to say he's a good guy. <laughs> oh, I see. Ruski Soldat Vali Soyo Moskovyu. I'm not sure. All I see is Ruski Soldat, I know. But because there's a Ukrainian flag, I'm with you. So uh, Germany, you know... We've got a lot of news. Basically, I don't want to go through all of this. Germany, Germany's playing games with some inf infantry fighting vehicles. It said it didn't have any more and then build one of the big uh, German publications, uh, big media networks that's been, uh, been around forever, discovered that Germany did, in fact, have 100 of them available. And, uh, oh, wait, no, was it 100 available? No, it had, uh, yeah, the German government blocked up to 100 of these infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine and basically said it didn't have any available, and it did. Just really you know, kind of a lousy move, move by the Germans. Um, in good news from Germany, and I'm taking a break on this one because I've never seen that motorcycle before. That's pretty cool. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt the news, but sometimes, thank you, Lynn. Sometimes people put cool stuff on TikTok, and I've got to thank them in, in the same way that I thank you guys for your questions. Um, actually, Nicolina, I've got that. Okay, I do have your guys' questions. Good. I wanted to make sure because I interrupt you. I interrupt for the YouTube questions, so therefore I've got to interrupt when the people do the cool stuff on TikTok. So thank you because both of you in your own ways are contributing. I appreciate that. Um, so Germany's vice chancellor and energy minister says that um, – a breakthrough is imminent in the negotiations over a European Union embargo on Russian oil and that it is only a, possibly a matter of days. Now, let's not believe it till we see it. But what I'm wondering is whether they're going to find either they're going to give uh, Hungary such an exemption like for five years or they're just going to drop Hungary entirely and say, Hungary, you know, we're just not even counting you. The rest of us are going to embargo them, which would be great if that happens. So. Let's see. The devil is in the details in terms of what's actually agreed to and whether it's significant enough, but might be a big deal. Uh, this story I just saw right before we came on, Coinbase, which is one of the uh, big American cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, they went on, I believe they went on the stock market uh, earlier this year or at the end of last year. Coinbase just announced that they are banding, they are banning, excuse me, all Russian crypto accounts. Earlier, they had said that they would ban all accounts that were over $10,000 in value. Now, as of today, 
They're dropping all Russian accounts and they say they're doing it, doing it to comply with American financial laws. Uh, what will be interesting to see is what impact this has. The concern here, thank you for that, Lola, is that the Russians would, I don't even know how to pronounce your name, CT, all right, that the Russians would be finding ways around, and I'm sure they have been, with cryptocurrency around the sanctions. Even if they aren't allowed on Coinbase, there are other exchanges, so you would need to see this replicated through other crypto exchanges, but Coinbase is still very big, so that's a good thing. Um, Aeroflot, okay, sanctions working. Aeroflot, this is good. Actually, I am making my way through here pretty quickly. This is good. Um, Aeroflot announced that 13 of, it is only serving now 13 of 56 countries. I don't remember if I told you guys this yesterday. If I, if I did, I'm repeating myself, but I do the video as well when I put it on TikTok. So I never quite know if I did it for the video or I did it for you folks, but hopefully I'm not repeating myself. Um, third, Aeroflot is only serving 13 of 56 countries at this point that it used to serve. It has lost its CEO its strategy chief and other top executives. It is now running out of spare parts for the majority of its 350 plane fleet. So again, great news. This is what the sanctions will do. And this is also why we were saying that it was going to take a while for some of the era flop. Exactly what people have been calling it, which I wish I had put that on my video era flop for the name. Um, but it, it's, it's an issue of sometimes it takes a while for the sanctions to kick in like the spare parts issue, right? Remember at the very beginning, Boeing and Airbus had announced that they were no longer providing spare parts to uh, Russia's fleet of commercial jets. And I remember Air, uh, Boeing in particular took its its manual offline for the Russians because apparently, and it kind of makes sense, right? But for really complicated jet planes, they've got a manual because it tells them the detail of how to fix it. Well, nowadays, rather than giving you a book, they let you access it online. Well, they pulled the Russians account at the beginning of the war. So the Russians now not only don't have access to the spare parts, but they don't have access to the book telling them how to use them. So even if they try to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, but, you know, triage from their other planes to say, okay, well then we'll use it from this plane and at least this plane can fly. They may not know how to install the parts. So this was very good news. Um, actually, that was it for my Ukrainian news. I, I went through that so quickly. <laughs> That was like more news than I normally put, but I think I'm talking fast today. Um, I might as well tell you some of the other news stories that were out here because I think they're interesting from an international perspective. And then I've got a video or two that was really fun. Since since I went quicker, I can show you the videos. Um, President Biden today, thank you, Messi, made a statement about Taiwan that was very interesting. He was asked if if Unlike Ukraine, if Taiwan were invaded by, you know, <laughs> by, the, by the owner of TikTok, whose name I'm not going to mention, would the U.S. respond differently than it did in Ukraine? And Biden said, yes, we would respond militarily. Um, I didn't get into thermobaric stuff. No, we, yeah, they've used it before. I mean, but um, he, he said that uh, he said that, yes, we would respond militarily. And basically suggesting that the U.S. would send in troops, unlike what we did in, in Ukraine. Well, the White House later tried to back off from what Biden said and said, no, 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 no. Biden hasn't changed the U.S. policy. The U.S. policy is still strategic ambiguity. Uh, and our policy has been strategic ambiguity for decades with China that basically we leave it ambiguous whether or not we would respond militarily and how we would respond. Would we, excuse me, send in weapons like we're doing with Ukraine? Would we send in American ships and the American military itself? We leave that ambiguous. Well, Biden did not leave it ambiguous today. Biden made it quite clear. And then the White House backed off. And this gets to that larger issue, and this is also this is a larger issue of American politics that we have to deal with, that for some reason, when Biden gets tough, the White House wimps out, and they've always got to then back away and say, oh, he didn't mean that. And I'm kind of getting tired of that. They did it with, famously, as you'll all remember, the Putin thing. Remember? When Biden uh, in Poland, and this was, mind you, towards the beginning of the war, and Biden's in Poland, and he says, this man cannot remain in office, and the White House freaks out and goes, oh my God! He didn't mean that. And we're like, oh, God, stop. To me, at least, thank you, Borderline. To me, 
whether or not Biden meant it, and I think he did mean it, and I think he knew exactly what he was saying. I do not think the man's crazy or too old. He knew exactly what he was saying. They they make him look like a senile old fool every time they do this. And they make it look like the president of the United States doesn't know what he's talking about, right? I mean, if you're literally saying, Biden is saying we'd send in the troops, and then the White House says, oh, he didn't mean that. Well, then what did he mean? And what is China to think he means? I mean, the whole thing is screwed up if he didn't mean it. And I'm starting to think that he means it. And then his staff comes to him and goes, you just can't say that. You just can't say that. And for some reason, Biden sits there and goes, okay, okay. And I really, so I mean, as much as I fault the staff at this point, the staff has corrected Biden enough that it's not just the staff. Biden is accepting the fact that the staff is going to correct him and says, okay, go ahead and correct me. And you know what? Again, like I said, he's making himself look weak and wavering, and I don't think that helps him. And it sure as hell doesn't help Democrats leading into the fall congressional elections. Um, the Just a real quick story on this. Mark Zuckerberg of Meta Facebook. I still can't call it Meta. I just think it's such a stupid name. But Meta Facebook fame was sued by the attorney general of the District of Columbia, the city I live in, um, for being involved in the Cambridge Analytica scandal. And what the attorney general is alleging is that uh, Zuckerberg encouraged election manipulation, basically saying he knew what Cambridge Analytica was doing and was happy about the fact that he was on there, that they were using Facebook and he wanted them to use Facebook even more to do what they were doing. Very interesting. All right, two videos to show you guys. And then, and as always, I'm gonna use my iPhone, but you know, we'll survive. It's not the it's not the easiest form on the iPhone, but you know you'll live. Hang on a second, give me a sip of water, and then I'm going to my favorites on my phone. Okay, oh, this is the first one. So this one, I posted it on TikTok, and I told folks I wasn't sure what the story was, and people told me the story. This was something I reported on a little bit ago. <clears throat> and I did a TikTok video, but this is another a new video of it. That's great. That Ukrainian, I don't know who, people have been going into cities that have been so heavily bombed that people have had to leave, but they had to they had to leave their pets behind. And these guys are going in and saving the pets. So this guy, they go and they find a kitten. And what I read later, somebody in the comments on my TikTok said that the kitten was buried in the rubble from a building that was hit by the Russians and they saved the kitten and hang on a second. I'm going to turn on my do not disturb. Um, they saved the kitten and this is the video and I'm going to try to get it close enough for both of you. We'll see. Oh, they did music, but But it's the soldier who ended up adopting the kitten. Look at this. That's my favorite. The kitten is in the little dashboard. <laughs> and then he, this, this is great. It looks like he fell asleep holding the kittens. I just love that. I hope it was good enough on TikTok because I know on, on YouTube, I mean, on, on TikTok, I know it was okay, but YouTube is a little harder to see. The other one, and this is, this is great too. So I don't have the version that is translated because I didn't know there was one, but somebody's got a, oops, somebody's got a version of this that uh, has a, an English translation below, but I will tell you, some U Ukrainian troops got together and decided to do a video homage, in other words, like a uh, thank you to the Bayraktar drone, the Turkish drone that they've been using to blow up all the Russian tanks. So this song is about Bayraktar, Bayraktar, the name of the drone. And the only part of it I can understand is the part where he says, Ruski fascisti. Russian fascists, but they're sitting, they decided to do it in a junkyard full of blown up Russian military equipment. So honestly, even if you don't understand, I love, and these guys, also these guys are too freaking cool. 
as well. It just cracked me up. So, okay, I'm going I'm to again come closer. So hopefully you both can, you can hear it for sure, but hopefully you can get, well, it's just them dancing. Isn't that great? But so it's like, oh, it's Putin and all the propagandists at the end, which is the best part. I totally, yeah, I was forgetting there was another version on YouTube. I should have put, anyway, you can Google the, the version with the subtitles, but I thought that was wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, they're going to win. That's what somebody said. Somebody said they're going to win Eurovision again with that song. It really, I mean, it's pretty funny. Hang on. I'm going to, adjusting my uh, temperature in here. It's getting warm again. Hang on. There we go. All right. That was it for the, uh, for the substance, not the substance, for my news today. We can jump into the Q&A. And Harvey, thank you. I saw that. Appreciated that. Um, let's dive right in. You know what? I will... Uh, I'll start with the Q&A on TikTok, and then we'll just go back and forth as always. And, um, and of course, if you guys buy the Super Chat, I always go to that first, so I appreciate that. But let me dive right in on the TikTok questions. I don't know why you got, t- kicked, why you got kicked off TikTok. Um, perhaps they should let you back on. Moderators, if you could help Maddie out. Um, let me see here. Sorry, look at what you guys have written with my, with my grandma glasses. Um, a Russian general resigned. I did not hear about that. I do not know about a Russian general resigning. That's interesting. Um, I have nothing on Ukraine bombing or storming a Russian base. (laughs) Tell Sasha she's a good girl. I will. Um, You know, the Putin thing, who knows? I mean, in terms of Putin's health, um, shoot. You know, I was going to, let me pull this up. Shoot. I actually had pulled up a story. I was at my uh, allergist today. And when I was at the allergist, I pulled up a story and saved bits of it because I was going to report on it for you guys and totally forgot. Hang on here. This was a really interesting story about Putin's health. Where is this? Yeah. So, okay, let me give you a little details of this. This is really interesting. So um, it might be from Business Insider, but they quoted a lot of different sources, which is interesting. The first is, actually, I'm really glad you brought that up, Joanna. This is really interesting. So Former MI6 head. So MI6 and MI5, I always forget which is which, but they're British intelligence, okay? And one of them is James Bond and the other one isn't, but I can't tell you which. Um, Maybe MI6 is external, I never remember. Anyway, the former head of MI6. So this is like saying the former head of the CIA, okay? Somebody trustworthy said he believes that Putin could be out of power by next year. 
He thinks Putin will enter a long-term medical facility and not return to power once he is out. Um, he, let me read you some of this. Sir Richard Dearlove was head of UK's MI6 from 1999 to 2004. Um, I'm really going to stick my neck out. I think he'll be gone by 2023, but probably into the sanatorium from which he will not emerge as the leader of Russia. Now, they quoted other people, Bellingcat's Christo Grozev, who I've, I follow on Twitter, he's very respectable, uh, said last week, top Kremlin security officials believe the war in Ukraine is lost and that Putin is losing his grip on power. Um, Ukraine's military intelligence chief, Major General Budanov, told Sky News last week that Putin was in a very bad psychological and physical condition and he is very sick. Um, Former British spy Christopher Steele recently said sources told him Putin is seriously ill and regularly leaves meetings for medical treatment, contributing to increasing disarray in the Kremlin. And that may be it. That is it that I've got on Putin. But I was going to do a video summarizing it, and I totally forgot when I got home Um very interesting. I mean, because there's a lot of rumors going around, but what's interesting is when you've got that many rumors from that many people and granted it's one step removed for each of them, you know, it's Christopher Steele hearing from his sources, it's Grozev hearing from his, but that's a lot of different sources hearing a similar story, which is very interesting, you know, very interesting. So who knows? But, um, uh, anyway, just that, I just thought I would bring that up because I thought that was pretty interesting and cool. Uh, CK Ariet Art. Do we know how Ukrainians in previously occupied areas prior to February are doing? Has it changed? Well, you mean like Crimea? I, I mean, well, there'd be Crimea and there would be the east of the east would be the previously occupied territories before February. Um, I don't know that it's, we don't hear anything about them, to be honest, actually. We've heard nothing about them at all, so I don't know. It's funny you raise the question because you're right. There's Nobody has sort of asked the question and said, well, first of all, I'd be curious, how many are there, right? Um, how many How many Ukrainians are, for example, in Crimea, they shipped in. I read, I want to say I read that they shipped in 700,000 Russians into Crimea when they when the Russians annexed it illegally in 2014. And I'd be curious, like, what what's going on? Now, the thing is, once you get to eastern, eastern Ukraine, like Luhansk getting towards the Russian border, you start hitting up people that are more sympathetic to Russia. So I don't know too what you've got, you know, then you start getting some real nuance of different Ukrainian opinion. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me see here. Sorry. I'm trying to look and see if you guys had other questions on YouTube. Otherwise I'll jump back to TikTok again. James Bond was MI6. There we go. All right. Cause it was for, I was gonna say MI6 was foreign. That figures Bond was foreign. Yes dealing with foreign affairs, so to speak, going abroad. So yes, James Bond was MI6. That's the best way for us to understand. Um, let me see here. Interesting. Um, yep, I talked about, I already talked earlier today about the Russian diplomat. Um, okay, there we go. All right, let me jump on another another YouTube, uh, TikTok question for you guys. Um, they did mention the guy, let me tell you, they did, somebody, uh, somebody, Borderline nonsense asks thoughts about who might replace Putin. The story, or, the story did in fact mention, and it said, um, Dear Love, who's the MI6 former head, said that there is no succession plan in Russian leadership, but said if Putin did enter a medical facility, the most likely person to step up is Nikolai Patrushev, the secretary of the Security Council of Russia. The only thing is, I don't know who this guy is, and I don't know what the significance is of him stepping into Putin's job. At least, you know, while Putin is in this institution or whatever. So, don't know. I mean, he's clearly a Putin loyalist or he wouldn't be the secretary of their security council. But, you know. Um, that's okay, Maddie. Ask the mods, moderators on, on YouTube if you can help Maddie get her account back on, on TikTok. I think that would be nice, okay? Thank you, guys. Um, let me just see here. Okay. I think we're good. Let me grab another one from you guys. Remember, guys, on TikTok, use the Q&A box at the bottom. To you put, enter your questions. Um, 
Well, I mean, what will happen after the war depends on your definition of after the war, <laughs> Nick. And what I mean, that was the question on TikTok. What I mean by that is, um, does after the war mean Russia is back to where it was pre-February, you know, where they're only occupying Crimea, they're only occupying sort of the far eastern Russia? Does after the war mean Ukraine's had to capitulate? I mean, it, it. Depends. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, at this point, I see the war going for a while because I see Russia digging in. I oh God, I read another analysis about this last night that was uh, from this British guy. I'm forgetting his name, but I follow him. I've told you guys about him before. I'm forgetting his name now, but he does these wonderful uh, nightly updates on Twitter where he does about 25 tweets in a row explaining what's going on. Seems to be a well-respected guy, and he backed up what I have been hearing, which is. Um, doesn't look like Russia is going to be getting much more land. They might get some, but probably not much more. They're in trouble. In the next few weeks, they're going to be reaching sort of the limits of how far they can go in terms of offensively. And they are, in fact, going to fall back defensively at that point. And the Ukrainians then, the, well, then the Russians are going to switch to defending the land they already have, you know, digging in, mines, uh, anti-tank, you know, everything they can do to defend the land and the Ukrainians will go on the defensive and the advantage the Ukrainians have, thank you, Tyson Ann, I appreciate you helping Maddie with that. Um, what the Ukrainians have, oh, and thank you, Maddie, for that. <laughs> um, what the Ukrainians will be able to do then is pick their battles and they can decide where and when they want to fight the Russians next to try to get their land back. And it's better to pick your battle than to have the other guy pick it, right? The other thing he was saying is, it's going to get very difficult for the, for the, I did it again. I call the, the Russians, the Republicans all the time. And I don't know why the Republicans are not occupying territory. <laughs> so I should not be doing that Freudian slip. The Russians, because the Russians are going to have to administer these territories that they're occupying. They're going to have to run the government. It's going to cost them money. It's going to cost them manpower. You're going to have soldiers who are trained to be soldiers. And frankly, they're not trained very well to be soldiers who are having to run these occupied territories as political people. He said it's going to be a disaster for the Russian forces. And at the same time, while they're also having to use men to administer these territories, they're still fighting the Ukrainians because the Ukrainians are still on the offensive trying to kick the Russians out of these territories. So anyway, that's that's what he sees happening next. And it goes in line with at least what I've been thinking from what I've been reading that I just think the next big move is for the Russians to dig in and for this to become a war of attrition or whatever you want to call it, um, where the Ukrainians are keep fighting the Russians and trying to get their, their territory back slowly. And the Russians are facing not only the Ukrainians directly, the Ukrainian military, but a Ukrainian guerrilla war, like we talked about earlier, where you actually have partisans who are secret partisans, you know, secret groups of citizens who are armed by, frankly, the West via Ukraine, who are also going to be blowing things up and doing causing all sorts of mayhem. So that may not end soon, but it's going to be a mess for the Russians, an absolute mess. Um, what else we got here? So I keep trying to find TikTok, but you guys are, are YouTube, but you guys aren't answering. You guys aren't asking questions. So I'm like, OK, I will go pull up another TikTok or another TikTok question. All right. No problem. TikTokers, you're lucky today. They're being quiet over on YouTube. Um, oop, my dog is up and walking around. Uh, what else I got here? Do, 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 do. Will Ukraine get land back? <sighs> yes. The question is how much they get back. I, you know, there is a decent chance that Ukraine will get back to where they were before the war. I think. I think that's a given. I don't think it's a given, but I mean, I think that's a pretty good chance. So, meaning um, everything up to Crimea in the south, so Kherson and all that, Mariupol and all of that stuff, right, going up to the east. And even in the east, pushing back to where they were, because Russia has more in the east now than they did when the war started. So pushing back all of that, I think they're going to do. Pushing beyond that, you know, partially hard to say because, you know, the Ukrainians weren't really able to push further east anyway. I mean, they weren't able to get the farthest east territories under control in Ukraine, and they still hadn't tried to take on Crimea. But having said that, you know, the Russians aren't in great shape. 
It still is going to be interesting to see if Ukraine decides to eventually go for Crimea too. Now, you're going to get into a weird thing there of, you know, do does NATO, the French, the Germans, the Italians, and maybe the United States start putting more and more pressure on Ukraine to settle this and not drag it out forever. And I think I think you're going to see that if Ukraine decides it wants to go after Crimea, I think you're going to see these countries be an even bigger PITA, pain in the A, than they are now. Um do you think they really want lithium in Ukraine? I didn't. They got. I didn't even know they had lithium in Ukraine. They've got lithium in Ukraine. I knew they had resources in the east. Lithium's interesting because lithium is important for uh, electric cars, among other things. So, uh, and I don't know if if it's electric cars, if it also means other technologies and things too. You know, lithium. So that's actually very interesting. Um, my guess is, look, from what we know, Putin's Putin wants to reconstitute the Soviet Union, at least insofar as getting back the most important members of the band, starting with Ukraine, right? Ukraine is the one big one that he, feel, that he feels isn't, uh, isn't an independent country. It's Russian, and it, and it was a huge mistake letting it get away. So he wants it back. Now, does it help that Ukraine also is one of the most you know, fertile lands on the earth for growing grain? Yeah. Does it help that there are mineral resources in the East? Sure. But I don't think that's the main reason he wants it. He wants it because he wants to be, he wants to go down into history books as the, you know, the greatest czar that, that brought part of the Soviet empire back, at least insofar as um, this part, right? Um, oh, hello, you. We're not playing today. No, nope. <laughs> I'm being steered. I always like to show the TikTokers this because it always cracks me up. That would be, that would be my dog. Oh, she's given, she gave up now. Okay. She was giving me the uh, she was giving me the side eye from behind me, like what's going on. Um, Harvey was explaining Petrushov. From what I've read about Petrushov, so Petrushov uh, is the guy that the, M the former MI6 head said he believed at least would take over in the interim from uh, from Putin if Putin went to a sanatorium or something like that. From what I've read about Petrushov, he's as bad, if not worse, than Putin. There you go. Former KGB as well, massively anti-Semitic. And according to a lot of reports, a massive ego, sociopathic in nature. Well, that's nice. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Harvey. That makes me feel better. Um, I mean, not surprising. Who else would Putin have? You know, who else would Putin have? He'd have to have somebody that 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 would would go along with his worldview, you'd think, and would be loyal to him. Um, that's a good question. Um, Roz, Rozvaki. Rozvagi. Emmy. Interesting. Rosvagi. I've never heard that name before. Um, do you know who is controlling grain in Ukraine? Is it located on Russian controlled territory or Ukrainian? Um, good question. Now, from what I'm hearing, I am not hearing. I was just reading this earlier today with the Lithuanian thing coming up about them talking about trying to find a way to lift the embargo and you know have their own little flotilla defending grain exports that the biggest problem right now is the grain is going bad and not being exported. They, they were not saying that the biggest problem was that the Russians have all the grain and it's got to be liberated first and then exported. They were saying that it's just going bad. So now we know the Russians have been stealing grain, right? We had the grain that they were, they were uh, taking down to Crimea. They were taking some to some of the other Russian, uh, Russian occupied territories Christ. She just, see, you guys get it. I'm just showing this for the TikTok people. She's literally sitting there wanting me to pull. Oh, now she's got her. She's got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. She just absolutely corrects me up. My dog is behind me trying to get me to play, but she's, you know, this big. So she like threw the ball herself and then looked around the corner of the couch and made a noise at me. And then as we were watching her with the, with the iPad, she just ran. <laughs> she just absolutely cracks me up. I wish I could. Wow. Well, you guys. Yeah. I could have. Try to show you a little better. It's a little harder. But in any case, so I'm, oh, and now she wants to go out. All right, we'll let you out real quick. And now that you've had your fun. Oh, go on. Go on. No? No? You think it's going to rain out there, don't you? No? It's up to you, son. There you go. All right. It is supposed to drizzle later, but we don't want the dog to know because then she panics. Um, so anyway, so my assumption is that 
the 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 bigger problem right now is is the uh, is getting the grain out. It's not a matter of the Ru- the Russians do have some of it, but the biggest problem is Ukrainians still have it and they just can't get they can't get rid of it, so to speak. So, which is why the Lithuanians were proposing that. So there you go. Um, let me grab another TikTok question. And as always, let me know mods if I miss anything from any of the super chat questions on uh, on YouTube. Um, just scrolling here. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know, Brenda. Brenda asked if any of the Russian soldiers were responding to 2402. You'll remember that 2402 was the uh, the the new phone number set up for Russian troops to call in if they want to defect. And it, we think people actually, some of my TikTok followers figured out that it must be not a pun, but it's it was set up that way because 2402 is February 24th. The way non-Americans would write it, like Europeans would write it, is 240222, the 24th day of the second month of 19. So, so that's what it probably is, 2402. Very interesting. Haven't missed anything. Okay, good guys. Thanks. Yep. And I'm and I'm and as I'm speaking of missing, there we go. I knew she was going. All right, you're coming back in. All right. There we go. All right. She's had her fun, and hopefully hasn't sniffed. She can. My dog can smell rain. It's kind of annoying. Sasha, we're not even. You are a good half an hour away from playtime right now. Just so you know. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to show. There we go. Now, oh, you're not, actually, she turned away. There we go. I was just wanted to give another view for the rest of you. No, Sasha, I'm not playing right now. No, no. Oh, my God. Look at this. All right, I'm going to stop doing this. I want to annoy you guys with my dog, but it's absolutely. She keeps running around the couch and then making noises, but I know my dog. It's the dad, look at me noise. God, it's like having a three-year-old. I swear to God. Sasha, not right now. So Casey asks, uh, or Cassie, excuse me, do you think the West will turn against Ukraine because they won't agree to a ceasefire? I don't think the West will turn against Ukraine, but I think, I mean, that's a really interesting question. That's a really interesting. Oh, you're not at all bugging me, Remy. That was really interesting what you sent me, by the way. Sorry, just a quick question somebody asked on on on, uh, on YouTube. Not, not at all, Remy. That stuff was interesting. You're not bothering me. Don't worry. Not at all. <laughs> Hey, okay, stop that now. No, no, no. I don't know why you think we're playing right now. No, no, stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm getting barked at. Come here. Come here if you want to come here, all right? You know I'm going to pick you up and show you to everybody if you come here. Um, the re- So the question you're asking, Cassie, which is actually very interesting, is what – okay, If the Western powers like France and Germany and Italy and maybe even America to a degree want uh, want the Ukrainians to reach a ceasefire and would rather have this war be over sooner rather than later, what's the actual practical impact of that? What would thank you, Marcy, for that? What would the West actually do? Would we would we you know give them fewer weapons? I mean, I think look, I think the Germans are perhaps the best example on how, you know, people, okay. Yeah, you guys can deal with that one. Okay, I'm going to let somebody else ban that guy. (laughs) Have fun. Um, Thank you. Thank you for those on TikTok. We've got crazy people popping in. Crazy people. Um, The, uh, sorry, crazy, crazy man's messages were getting my, were getting my attention here. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think what you're going to see is a little bit what's happening with Germany, where you're going to see this kind of good cop, bad cop thing, where Germany, you know, Germany is announcing in a couple of days we may have the oil embargo. And then we find out Germany lied about not giving the infantry fighting vehicles, right? And there's this back and forth and back and forth. Thank you, Tiffany, for that. This back and forth with Germany. And I think you're going to start seeing that with Italy. You're going to start seeing that with France. Now, you know, I would be curious to see in the grand scheme of things, somebody who understands, hey, stop it. Somebody who understands all the weapon systems and everything that's been given to Ukraine that could look and say, okay, you know, who could we afford, maybe not to lose, but who could we afford to become more problematic? Like, for example, if we pissed off the Italians, the Germans, and the French, would it really matter in terms of, not just the weapon systems, but the the replacements, the 
uh, the spare parts and everything else. I mean, it would have an impact because we know the Germans have given have given weapons, right? So th that would be a problem. But but I, I'd be curious from somebody who really, I mean, holistically understands everything the Ukrainians are getting, who could say, is it really the Americans and the Brits? You don't want to, is it just the Americans you don't want to piss off? Is it the Brits? Now you get into the whole European Union thing of if there's something you, if there's something in an ongoing way that Ukraine wants from the European Union, then they they don't want to piss off Macron or any European member, uh, European Union member, really, because, you know, the decisions are unanimous <laughs> in the EU. So you don't want this to have, you know, that to happen. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I do think it's a fine line also for, for, for the West itself, because at least in a lot of our countries, I mean, I forget, was it, I don't know, was Annette, whether it was you or somebody else saying that, was it in Denmark or where that you were saying that, uh, that, that sort of the public was getting a little bit fed up with Ukraine complaining about not getting help. Um, that's not happening here in America. What you do see in America is the, the I, would, I would say the far right. It's not even the right. It wouldn't be fair to say it was, uh, it was Republicans. It's, it's, really far right Republicans that are trying to cause rabble rousing and trouble with this. But the main Republican party is still on board. So, you know, so that's good. Uh, and that it was you. Okay. I have a bad memory of such things, but that I remembered, uh, hang on a second. See what, uh, I saw you guys adding, uh, at least become the largest. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Can that was cute. I liked how it actually threw it over my glasses. Um, have you seen that Italy has become Russia's largest EU seaborne crude export market? Okay, wait a minute. Russia's largest EU seaborne crude export market. So what do you mean? They're using they're 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 sending their oil out from from Italy's ports. Now Greece has been you know my little Greek homeland has been problematic too. I know, but you know. Um, oop, hang on, there was a. Uh, B. Madsen, there you are. How do you think Ukraine will play out in the midterms? Uh, America's congressional elections coming this fall. <clears throat> will America change its stance? Do I think the lack of news coverage on Ukraine will affect this? <sighs> hmm. Currently, it's good. Um, you know, it. We are. Boy, it's going to depend on Republicans. If if the Republicans can hold their own people together and not try to make this a partisan issue. Um, you know, I've already got trolls on TikTok, except that I am highly suspicious that the trolls on TikTok are Russians. And they're coming on and saying, you know, we've got this problem in America and you're spending 40 billion on Ukraine, right? And my response to that is, well, we were going to spend, Democrats were going to spend $3 trillion with a T dollars on fixing American problems, and the other guys killed it. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> go talk to them if you're upset. But, but, but Democrats suck at messaging, so they're not going to actually say that. Um, but if you were to have Republicans adopt that message and say, we've got all of these problems in America with baby food and everything else, and look at Biden spending all that money in Ukraine, then you're going to have a problem. But it has to be more than just the crazies. And currently, it's just the crazies. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene. I mean, people that you foreigners, may, you non-Americans may not know, but the Americans know who I mean. On right and left, people tend to think she's a nut job. I mean, good Republicans think she's a nut. And the good Republicans have been good on this, you know. Um, yeah, CPAC is its own other problem. And they're the, but again, it's actually what I will say too is you're fortunately seeing, you're not seeing the Trump Republican, maybe because Trump hasn't gone crazy on this yet, this issue. He could. And if he does, I think it's a problem. But, but the Republicans themselves have been very good at, at holding themselves together on this issue. So, you know, let's see what happens. But yeah, the news coverage, I mean, I was, I was noticing today when I was watching the news, um, the news coverage is just disappearing in terms of Ukraine. Literally, I turned the news on this morning and then turned it off. And I spent my day, all the news stories that I talked about with you guys, none of them did I get off the TV. I spent my entire day scouring news sites and scouring the, uh, thank you, Lynn, and scouring my Twitter feed and got all those stories. Previously, I would have gotten, you know, a month ago, 
many of my stories from seeing the TV and then I would do a little more research online. Now, the it's amazing how much the news has kind of died down on Ukraine. So that is its own concern, I would agree. That worries me. I don't ever want to run for public office syndicate, so ain't no way that's happening. Let me pull up another uh, TikTok question. Oh, I'm sorry, just scrolling down. Um, you know, so, so whether, uh, God, you're using the hard spelling. They've been using the easier spelling on, on TV. I mean, on, uh, on the newspapers here in America, whether Severo Donetsk will fall. It may, it may. I mean, the stuff I'm seeing says, you know, the Russians are, are, are moving forward there and they may even be able to, uh, encircle, you know, surround some Ukrainian troops there, which would be bad for the Ukrainians. So that may happen. Um, overall, that's kind of the only good news that you're hearing for the for the Russians lately is they may be, it's, a, it's a strategic town and they may get it. Um, but that's about it for good news. But yeah, yeah. History, MT. I don't I haven't seen you in a long time. Maybe I just haven't seen your comments. Have you been around? You're not required to come every day, but nonetheless, good to see you. Um, MT History Buff is saying war should never be normalized, but for the attention span of the average news consumer, it is already fading. It is definitely fading here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which, which means, well, I don't know what it means. I mean, it doesn't mean people, but it doesn't mean people don't want to help. It just means they're not focusing as intently on it as they were before. You know, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if it, if it has any impact on policy. I don't know whether it will. Uh, grab another one. Grab another one here. <clears throat> Oops. Yep, 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 yep. Bye, doctor. <laughs> um, and yep, I talked about Biden and Taiwan earlier. Um, um, my favorite sushi roll. We could talk about that during the period afterwards. I'm yawning again. Sorry. Um, what is Germany up to? We talked about that. Threats on the British Isles. I haven't seen any new ones. I mean, the Russians did threaten to, you know, nuke you guys, but I think it's all BS. They're never going to go after because you guys, because you guys have got nuclear submarines and that is your ace in the hole because nuclear submarines are impossible to hit. So there you go. Um, any chance Russia is leaking fake info about Putin? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, you know, that's really interesting. So Brenton asks, is there any chance that Russia is leaking false info about Putin? You know, um, a lot of people have been speculating that it's possible that for some reason, now not clear what reason, but for some reason the Russians think it's somehow to their advantage or Putin thinks it's to his advantage for people to think he's weak. I don't, I don't quite see how it helps him, but somehow, you know, I don't know. Actually, let me put it this way. Maybe, maybe what they're thinking, excuse me. Ooh, now I'm finally yawning. Maybe what they're thinking is that, or what he could be thinking is, you know, people think I'm crazy. People think I'm dying. People think I'm sick. That if I'm on my, I'm Putin now, right? If I'm on my deathbed, uh, what would I do? Would I use a nuclear weapon on my deathbed if I were losing? Maybe I would because I wouldn't care anymore. So it's possible that Putin is putting that information out there to give this impression of, oh my God, if he's if he's really dying and maybe he's sick and losing his mind, what might he do if a man who has nothing to lose? So that's possible. I also think at the same time, it makes him look like he's dying and really weak. And I'm not sure that's the kind of thing that uh, benefits him in terms of international uh, international stature, you know? So I'm not, I just don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, doop. <laughs> Yak sushi. Um, some of these I don't know about. Like somebody saying Putin's pre-recorded meetings. Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I haven't heard anything about that now. I see what you mean. You mean that he's record that he may be sick and recording things in advance to make it look like he's doing okay. Yeah, that I don't know. I didn't miss. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything here. Do, 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 do. Um, yep, we talked about Starbucks, like I said. 
assassination attempts against Putin? I've not heard. <clears throat> Zelensky did say there were several. Oh, DEFCON, you know, Tyler, the U.S. never, and thank you, I just saw that. Thank you for that. Uh, oh, Nana, Nana Kuhlman uh, for the stars. Um, the U.S. generally does not speak of its DEFCON position, its, de its defense condition. Um, boy, we go from DEFCON 5 to DEFCON 1. DEFCON 1 generally means war. DEFCON 5 generally means A-OK. -okay. Everything's great in the world. Um, generally speaking, we don't talk about when that changes. Like the military guys know, but the public at large does not know. So we don't even know when the war happened, whether anything like that changed. We just don't know. Uh, there were articles about it, actually, because people were asking. And they said, yeah, the military refuses to comment on it. Um, let me see. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Raymond just made a point. Raymond made, Ukraine needs time. It needs the Russians to continue the attack, to continue the attack. All the time they are attacking, they are getting weaker. July is the first time the Ukrainians will have new formations. They need two to three divisions. Um, okay, well, July, so May, June, July. So that would be six weeks from now-ish, five, six weeks. Okay, that's not unreasonable from what I've been hearing, meaning it's, it's sort of in agreement with what others are saying. Um, I mean, they're just saying the, the, the Russians are in no position to keep fighting this war. They're just everything I'm hearing from folks say they just it's going to be a couple weeks, you know. Um, yeah, the DEFCON status is secret. That's what I was just saying. They, they won't they will not tell you what it, they will not tell you what it is, what DEFCON we are at. It's probably it's got to be classified. I mean, people know in the military and it could be a low level classification, but it's still got to be classified. Um, but uh yeah, any case, that's, I mean, I've talked, I think I was talking about it earlier too. That's that's what people think. Russia just is going to hit a point in the next few weeks even where they're pretty much what, at that point, what Russia can do is hope that they can hold on to the land they've got. And, but in the next two weeks, they're probably going to get this, this Severodonetsk town or they may, they may get a couple towns and things, but they may also lose some stuff too because the Ukrainians are pushing back as well. And then the interesting fight happens. Like I said, when the Ukrainians go on the offensive, then what happens? You know, that'll be interesting. Uh, let me see here. Another bad German story. Mike, Poland and Germany have kind of an agreement that Poland give their T-72 tanks to Ukraine and get Leopard 2 from Germany in return. Poland delivers, Germany not. Um, now, that was what we heard. I'm trying to remember that... I'm trying to remember, though, did Poland finally turn? The, I'm already forgetting what we had with this. Did Poland already turn over the tanks? I get, I'm get. i forgetting because we had so many of those false alarms with things happening and then not happening that I can't even keep track anymore. Did Poland Did Poland finally send the T-72s? I thought Poland did send the T-72s, didn't they? Or was these the ones that they sent them, you're saying, and the Germans never held up their part of the bargain to help the, to then replace what the Poles had? Um. I will, if you guys comment, I will add that. Uh, where was the, uh, oh, MT, here we go. Yep, June 24th is Russia's next debt payment that requires dollars, and they may not have reserves left to do it. That, what, you know, what what is confusing with this is, what I'm confused about MT is we were told that April 1st, wasn't it April 1st was when they were required to pay their debt and the clock was ticking. Now, I think you guys said that they finally del delved, in delved into their reserves to pay with dollars, so they're able to prolong it another month. I mean, they certainly have enough reserves that they could do this for another... I mean, how many months could the Russians do this, that they could dig into their reserves and keep paying the debt and not default on it? You know, keep paying it in dollars, I mean, not paying it in rubles. I mean, don't they... I was going to say, don't they still have access to 300, 300 billion with a B? Of their uh, of their of their savings, I thought they did the savings, but of the you know currency reserves. Um, I am not interesting. Matty Man asks is if anybody else in the U.S. is seeing lots of military vehicles being moved all over, plus more planes and choppers in the sky. Ironically, not in Washington D.C., which is kind of funny. Um, seeing none of that here. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is. Um, what else we got here? H new 
Sorry. So what are you saying here, Raymond? Each new division needs 60 tanks. Okay. Well, actually, I did see just a quick little thing <clears throat> that, again, several of the military guys I follow were saying that Ukraine still needs more from us. And we're still not giving them that basically the feeling was, even though we're giving them a lot, we're still not giving them enough. Now, the reason that is, and actually it's, it's not, it's not contradictory because we have been giving Ukraine a lot and we've been giving them much more than we were previously. That doesn't mean we're giving them enough to beat Russia. And some of the concern is that we're still not wanting them to beat Russia, <laughs> right? That we kind of would like a stalemate. We'd like both sides to have to come to the bargaining table. So still a little concern about that. And I still suspect that there's some of that thinking going on in the Biden administration. I really do. Um, what's your opinion on the Taiwan situation? Oh, I did get into that earlier, Tyson Ann, but I can, we can talk again about it. Um, uh, if you mentioned it, no, it's okay. So basically... I mean, and we don't, and anyway, we don't always have the same people here anyway, meaning I know some of you come for 10 minutes and leave. Uh, Biden was asked today whether he would respond if, if China invaded Taiwan. Thank you, Kanausi, for that. If China invaded Taiwan, would, uh, would Biden react differently to, uh, to Taiwan than he would with regards to Ukraine? And meaning in terms of militarily and, and, and basically I think the question, I've got to pull up the exact question, but something like, would we go in militarily or something? And the, uh, the, I said, Jeff, I'll put your question on the screen while I'm discussing this and people can maybe even weigh in on here and I'll, I'll highlight it. Um, and what Biden said was, yes, I would respond differently. I would respond militarily in Taiwan. And everyone took it on its face to mean exactly what Biden said, which is the U.S. would invade, basically. We would, mil we would send in the U.S. military. We would defend it militarily. We would send in boats. We would send in troops, cl planes, clearly. But we knew what Biden was saying. And the White House backed off immediately. So that's not what he meant. No change in U.S. policy. The U.S. policy to date has been to be strategically ambiguous is the phrase, meaning we don't make clear what we would do because we want it to be unclear enough that it makes China worried and it makes them more likely to not to not get involved, to not want to attack. Um, and I talked about my concern because my concern is every time the White House jumps in and goes, that's not what he meant, they make Biden look like an idiot. I mean, they make him look like he doesn't know what he's talking about. And they've got to stop doing that. They've got to start owning these things. And and my final point on that was that I worry that it's not just, it is the White House staff. It is Biden's senior staff, probably the National Security Advisor. It could be the Secretary of State who who have his ear and are telling him, oh no, we can't do that. You got to back that. You got you to back off. It could cause all sorts of trouble. And Biden is listening to them. And that's the only reason he's letting them put out these, these, um, these corrections is because they're not going to put the correction out without Biden's permission. He's giving them permission. Now, the only other possibility is that this is all on purpose, that Biden wants to seem like the tough guy, because you could argue, you could argue that, that the same thing Biden did with Putin, where he said, this man cannot remain in office. And the staff said, oh, we didn't mean that, is the same thing he's doing now. That, In other words, Biden's a tough guy. Biden wants Putin gone. Biden is willing, Biden, Biden's heart of hearts is to go to war with China if China invades Taiwan, right? Like that, and he wants China to think that. And the White House, for political reasons, for diplomatic reasons, has to go, oh, no, no, we didn't mean that. But, and therefore, as a negotiating strategy, it the Chinese go, oh my God, now we know what Biden really thinks, right? So I don't think it's crazy. It is entirely possible that that's what, that that's what Biden's doing. What I worry is it's a great way to get Democrats to lose the election. And it's a great way to get Biden or Democrats. It's a great way for Democrats to lose the election in the fall, the congressional elections. And it's a great way for Democrats to lose the presidential election in three years, because it looks like our leader doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so it might be working with the Chinese and the Russians, but it's freaking everybody else out at home. It's, it's bothering me. I, I think it makes him look like he's like he doesn't know what he's doing. 
And I think he does know what he's doing, especially on foreign policy. Biden, this is Biden's expertise. Biden, Biden's getting old, yes, but he knows what he's doing on foreign policy. He's not mistakenly making comments about China and Russia. He's not. There is no way Biden is mistakenly making a comment about whether or not we would invade Taiwan. 0.0% chance that it was a mistake. No way. No way. Biden knew exactly what he was doing, and he's known this issue for 50 years. So, I, but it but it makes him look bad. So I don't know. I mean, I'm still like I said, I'm still a little divided on this too. But um, anyway, it's bothering me. I wanted to see did anybody answer the question about what the debt default would do? And then I will put Harvey's question up next. Oh, here we go. Syndicate weighed in. Uh, Jeff, a debt default could drive Russia's few remaining foreign investors out of the country, further isolating it. If the government defaults, companies may follow. The other issue with a debt default is if you are uh, anybody who's lending them money, I mean, it could be the foreign investors or whoever, is going to demand a very high interest rate if Russia has defaulted on its debt. Because they're going to say, we can't trust you to pay back your debt. So why should I invest in your country? Because I don't think I may not be able to get my money out. So if I'm investing, I want a guaranteed return of 50% or 30% or, or who knows what, right? Or if there's an interest rate involved, I want a higher interest rate. So that's that's the yeah, that that I know that part of it. Um Javi, Javi Nagila Javi. Um the UK foreign secretary uh, or his office have said they will be releasing or their office a statement in the morning in response to Russia one, the state TV channel. Yeah. Russia one. The Russia one is the Russian state TV channel. That's always threatening to uh, go to nuclear war with everybody. The ones that remember they threatened the Brits. They threatened, they finally threatened Ireland because you guys, you know, the Irish were getting upset. Um, Daniel, it was Daniel. That's right. Daniel O'Neill was getting upset. They weren't mentioning Ireland. They threatened Berlin. They threatened Paris, uh, Lithuania, I think. I mean, Poland, all this crap. That was Russia one. So a statement in response to Russia one implying there could be repeats or copycats of the Salisbury poisoning. Ooh. So basically Russia was threatening that they could go and try to poison, uh, do more assassinations of people on British soil. Now, currently, they went after Russian uh, Russian defectors, is who they went after before. I don't think they've gone after, they've had the balls to go after any nationals. Although, although were any of those people, Harvey, dual nationals? I'm wondering. I'm just curious. The Brits, were they also Brits at that point? Or were they on like a permanent, in America, we'd say green card or something like a permanent status that they could be there for life, even though they weren't citizens. Um, but, you know, I will say too, that was one of the things where I feel like the West almost let Putin get away with too much. I mean, there was a big response in terms of the, uh, thank you, Kanausi, a double, a double cake. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there was a big response in terms of the uh, diplomatic response, kicking out the diplomats. And there's a funny story there, actually, that Trump's own staff seemed to have tricked him into kicking out more diplomats than he wanted. They, um, they had given Trump the number of American diplomats being kicked out, and he thought it was the number that the Europeans were kicking out, and he didn't realize that the U.S. was kicking out like more than all the Europeans combined is, is more or less what I remember the story to be and got kind of upset. But it was too late at that point. Um, so, yeah, that's really bad. That's really bad. Jay, don't know. You got something happened. <laughs> You're back now. I can see you at least. I can see your comment, Jay. Um, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So if there are. Oh, I'm sure I was going to say thank you that CT. Oh, you're all coming in. And Felicia, too. Thank you. Um, what worried me was I felt like it wasn't a sufficient response. Thanks, Dwight. These guys came into your country. I mean, Kate, I, like, I think of this in America. Thank you, Fade. KGB agents, or KGB, FSB now, agents come into your country and are doing operations where they are literally poisoning and doing assassinations on Oh, sorry. Got to interrupt. Hello from Kiev. Hey, Max. Nice to see you. Exactly. Everybody's everybody's giving sunflower. Give some sunflowers on TikTok for Max from Kiev. That's our uh, 
that's what we that's our tradition we do <laughs> whenever we I don't know if you're Ukrainian I'm gonna guess you are even if you're not Ukrainian we're still gonna give you sunflowers because you're in Kiev so welcome um yeah that's really bad that's really bad and people are doing it on YouTube by the way Kiev is or Max as well we've got people I've got TikTok and YouTube going simultaneously and the YouTubers are giving you are giving you sunflowers too um but that really bothers me, though. Thought mom call and the feed ended. No, no, no. I don't know what got you kicked off, though. No, no. Everything's been the everything. I think has been fine here, but maybe maybe there was a bad connection, or who knows what happened. Sorry, Jay. Um, yeah, but in, in any case, I'm sorry. I was saying what it really bothered me because if somebody comes on your soil and is doing political assassinations, it's not just kicking out their, you know, kicking out their their people from their embassy and stuff, and. Partially because, uh, partially, in big way, thanks, Felicia, we're dealing with Vladimir Putin. We're dealing with somebody who is absolutely taking this as being as being uh, a sign of weakness, you know? But that's pretty ballsy of them to threaten that again. Wow. I'm going to um, pull this up, Salisbury, and I'm going to say Putin health. I saw the little hearts. Thank you. The Putin health thing I wanted to do a follow-up video on, so thank you for that. Oh, that was Vaughn who did the hands. Thanks, Vaughn. Appreciate that. Um, interesting. Interesting. Cammy, always doing the fun stuff. Uh, yeah, that's interesting, Harvey. Wow. Actually, Harvey, if you've got a link for that, feel free to put it up. Because um, I wouldn't mind, or if people want to go check it out, that's interesting. Um, oh, God, it's 726. All right, guys, let's call it quits on this. I mean, I'm going to hang out for another 10 minutes anyway, but I didn't realize we were talking this long. Um Yep, Salisbury and Oliver uh, Litvinenko. Oh, that's right. Litvinenko was there too. I forgot. He's the one that they laced the T. I remember reading his story. I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Christy and Brenda. Um, but yeah, guys. So, okay, let's, assuming I didn't miss anybody, let's, uh, this is the part then where we're going to hang out for another 10 minutes and just chat, but hopefully nothing too, uh, nothing too Ukrainy if we can help it. Just because. We've been doing this for an hour and a half now. So yes, thank you, moderators. But like I said, we do hang out for another 10 minutes anyway. So feel free to hang out. Feel free to do all the crazy stuff <laughs> on TikTok. Um, and uh, Sasha is laying down again. I don't know where. She could be on my couch or she could be in my bedroom. But she finally gave up. She got kind of pissed off that I wasn't playing with her. So she finally went. Thank you, Maddie. I'm glad we were able to straighten your thing out. Um, oh, oops, sorry, Syndicate. Oh, and th thank you, Christy. Now that I know those aren't potato chips, <laughs> I always thought they were potato chips. Thanks, CT. I'm glad you're liking this. Uh, let me see this real quick. I oh, sorry. Interesting question by Tina. Or Tina saying, can Biden, oh, can, can Biden declare war on his own without Congress's approval? No. Um, it's my understanding he can in times of emergency. He can't declare war, no. But, you know, practically speaking, we've had a lot of wars we fought where there weren't declarations of war. Um, now, Congress controls the purse strings, as we say, uh, and therefore they control the money. So Congress is in, is in control of the money the administration, very expensive potato chips, exactly, uh, is in charge of the money that, that the administration gets. So if Congress doesn't like the war the president's doing, Congress can take the money away. Now, it can be hard for Congress to do that because let's face it, if we get into a war with somebody, or even if it's not a declared war, if Congress takes the money away, they're leaving U.S. troops, they're dying. You know, thank you, Poppy, for that. So it could be it could be a political politically different matter for Congress if they do that. But nonetheless, no, the president cannot declare war. But, you know, there's been a lot of discussion of does it even matter anymore because we've had, oh, that's right, the news recap. Does it even matter anymore because we've had so many undeclared wars that the United States has been in that does it even matter if we declare war anymore? So that's dumb is his name. Just says, on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming it's a guy and not a woman, but who knows? Uh, just said that I didn't do my recap, and you are correct. I did not do my recap. Let me uh, thank you, Kanausi. Let me do a quick recap of the top of the of the headlines of the stories. Um, the Russian media is saying that they are going to try the Azov style uh, defenders. Uh, the 21 year old, thank you, Poppy, 
soldier who killed the uh, the 62 year old Ukrainian civilian just got life in prison. Lithuania is proposing a coalition of countries to escort Ukrainian vessels with grain shipments. Starbuck announced it is permanently leaving Russia. Um, a mid-level UN diplomat for Russia quit and wrote a very long email blasting Russia and the war that caused some waves. Uh, guerrillas, meaning partisans, in the town of Nerhodar, thank you, Kanausi, uh, down in southern Ukraine, uh, set off a bomb, apparently, and tried to blow up the mayor, but the mayor, <laughs> thank you again, the mayor uh, is the, collab the collaborator mayor of a town that is occupied by the Russians, showing that the the opposition, not just the opposition, but the the citizen, you know, militia, whatever you want to call them, are active and know what they're doing, and they've got access to bombs and they're able to use them. So that's really interesting because it's a it's a taste. <laughs> Thank you, Poppy. It's a taste of what could be coming in terms of uh, Russia occupying. Poland cut off all of its natural gas imports from Russia early. Czech Republic is sending helicopters, tanks, and rockets. Denmark is sending Harpoon anti-ship missiles, which is a big deal. Germany may have lied or appears to have lied about not being able to send some fighting vehicles that it could have sent. Uh, Germany's vice chancellor and energy minister says there may be a breakthrough in the next few days on having an oil embargo of Russia. Coinbase cryptocurrency exchange has now banned all Russian accounts from its system. Uh, Aeroflot is in increasing trouble because of the sanctions. The Russian airplane company is only going to 13 of 56 countries. It has lost a number of its top staff and it no longer has spare parts or it is running out of spare parts for the majority of its planes. And then I mentioned two additional non-Ukraine stories. Uh, President Biden saying he would go to war over Taiwan and Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook meta fame being sued by the D.C. Attorney General who says that he was involved in the Cambridge Analytica election scandal of 2016 here in the States and that he encouraged their election manipulation. So very interesting. And then I showed a really neat video of a kitten. And a, oh, you know what? Since we're sitting here now, now I can look. I can't pull it up on here. I can look for the uh, the Bayraktar video that has the translation. Hold on. Bayraktar song, hopefully that has the translation on the bottom. One moment here. Yeah, one minute. Ooh. And I was glad to see we had more people on, on YouTube, on TikTok today. So it's... Yeah, but that's the different. I mean, that is the song, but it's not the one with. I want to see the subtitles. Hang on. Come on, guys. You got to give me subtitles here. Oh, come on, come on, come on. This isn't the one. All right. Oops. Uh, Byractor song, we put subtitles, but I'm a little afraid. I mean, I'd like to show that one. I don't know whether, does that one have subtitles? God, best places to eat in DC. I'm probably the worst person to give you advice on that. <laughs> I mean, I could pull up the Byractor song with the English, but it's not going to show those guys dancing. Is there one with those guys dancing that shows it or not? I don't think there's... Oh, oh you'll never be able to read this. Hold on, I'll just read the, hold on, I'm going to read the, uh, I'll read the words, why not? I'm not going to sing it. The invaders came to us in Ukraine, their uniforms, new military chain, but their, but their inventory melted in part. Bayraktar. Russian tankmen hid in the bushes to sip their effing she- but the soup's fat got overheated in part <laughs> because of the Bayraktar. <laughs> um, I remember she, she and Kasha, right? Bayraktar. Sheep came to us from the east to reestablish a great state. But best shepherds of sheep flocks are Bayraktar. <laughs> I mean, it's silly, but it's cute. I like it better with the guys dancing. Their arguments, different weapon, powerful rockets and hardware step in 
We have a comment to all of the above by Ragtar. I'll do one more verse and then we'll stop. <sighs> they wanted to invade us with force and we took offense at these orcs. Russian bandits are made into ghosts by Bayraktar. You get the idea. You get the idea. That's cute. Oh, thank you, Gamer Game and Kanausi both. Oh, what else? What else? What else? You guys are all having a discussion about, uh, about War Powers Act. Uh, I don't have it in me. Yeah, I definitely want to read that about the... Uh, oh, man. Oh. Bayraktar is the... I don't know what the word... It's the name of the drone in Turkish, but I don't know. Does Bayraktar actually mean something in Turkish? It must. It must. I'm guessing, could Raktar be some kind of a raptor or something? What does it mean? I can't copy that one here, though, Syndicate. Um, if you send it to me... Syndicate, send it to me in my... In my uh, in my Twitter, if it's the one, if it's the one that has the guy singing, our guys, the, you know, the funny guys together. Um, but yeah, what does Bayraktar mean? I can look here and see. I, my favorite sushi, you know, I do like California rolls. I must admit, I'm a California roll guy. Um, I mean, the War Powers Act and all of that gets very complicated. Um, let me see. What does Bayraktar mean? We are not the first to ask this question. Hang on. Means rich man, get out. It is a village in Turkey. It is a surname. It is a surname, interesting, from Persian, literally meaning flag owner or flag bearer. Uh, it's a Turkish surname and word that consists of the Turkish word bayrak for flag and the, Pers the Persian suffix dar or yeah, dar, I guess, literally meaning flag owner. So flag bearer. Interesting. So they're saying flag bearer, but I guess meaning the, you know, the lead, our standard bearer. There you go. The standard bearer of our fleet. So it's their version of the Moskva, but it doesn't sink. Um, that's my guess. Yeah, that's my guess on that. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And hat and mustache. Thank you, puppy, for the hat and mustache. Ah. Uh. What else, guys? What happened? I did make a very good chocolate chip cookie recipe I've got that is from the New York Times. I think it's from the New York Times. It's rye. You use rye flour. That's very good. Um, so mom's doing okay. Kukla, I have not. I don't usually ask about Kukla. She's okay. Sasha's my fave, not Kukla. Um, but what do you do? <clears throat> it's a really good recipe, yeah. It's got a little bit of molasses. And you take the rye, it's rye flour and regular wheat flour. And you take the rye flour and you heat it up in a frying pan for about five minutes <clears throat> just to toast it. And the toasting adds a really nice flavor. to it. It's delicious. It adds a really nice flavor to it. So it ends up being a, uh, here. I, will, I will show you the dough and you'll get a sense of how it's totally different than a normal chocolate chip cookie dough. It will really be a tease. I don't know if you can totally tell, but this is a much darker, this is a much darker chocolate chip cookie dough than you would normally see. It may be hard to tell here, but like in, it's looking brighter on the screen. It's a much redder because of the molasses in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really be bad. But the, as I said, the rye flour, because you toast it, it adds a nice depth to it. Mm, my God. And the uh, and the molasses, you don't use too much. But you use about a tablespoon of molasses. So again, this is rye chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. Nummy, nummy, nummy. Mm. So, ooh, that was good. It's very good. It's very good. Well, what I do is I make it, and then that's the most cookie dough you've ever seen. Are you American? <laughs> that's not a lot for an American. What I do is I make the dough. Chocolate chip cookie dough should be 
in the refrigerator for about 36 hours. Uh, the New York Times tested it, by the way, and found that, in fact, it is true. Um, horses eat it. Rye, rye flour is very good, Annette. Don't mock rye flour. Um, actually, I will bet I will bet you Scandinavians use it too. Don't the Swedes? I forgot. Don't, doesn't the limpa bread from the Swedes use rye flour? I've made limpa bread before. Hold on. Scandinavians mocking rye flour. How dare you? Let me look and see. This is my limpa bread. As I said, which I've made. Swedish limpa bread. Dark rye flour. See? Mock, mock not the rye flour, Scandinavian lady. <laughs> I'm wise to you people. Maybe the Danes don't, but the Swedes do. Um, so, yeah, the plants, those are my Christmas cactuses. Mostly my Christmas cactuses. I do have a, uh, yeah, mostly. I've got an orchid. Well, then I've got my, although I can't, I can sh always show you guys, as I've shown you before, I've got my, uh, my, African violets that are really nice. That one's my favorite because I love the leaves on it. But you can see I put a couple different varieties together. And the one on the bottom, African violets grow very well for me here in D.C. I'm going, so, oh, hold on. Sasha wants her little treat, and I'm going to take her to say hi to you guys, too. One second. All right, I will give you a treat, and then you can say hi to everybody, too, okay? All right, here. You know how this works, okay? Hey, so we can do a check. Wait, wait, you know, how does this doesn't there you go. Okay. This is our trade off. You know that. I pick you up to show you off, and then you get to have your treat. Okay? Oh, here. You guys can see her better. There you go. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, don't lose it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. There you go. See? Not so bad. You don't get to go down yet. You get to at least say hi for half a minute. Okay? That's the trade off for eating the treat. Yep, just see everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Mm. Actually, she's actually, actually even looking a little bit today, so you can see her. Sasha. Yeah, she turns, all right. <laughs> My dog, who hates getting picked up. Hates getting picked up. Oh, hey, Latvia. Const Const Constante. Constante? Is that like Constantine, I'm guessing? I have never been in the Baltic states, and I've been dying to get up there at some point. It's just one of those places I've never been. And of course, there's three of you, which makes it a little uh, a little difficult because three different countries. But once I got there, um, your friends in Ukraine are metalheads. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, they, there's a lot of, I mean, oh, God, really? But you got, will you have your water? Sasha's out. Okay, one second. Sorry. Sasha's out of water. As I said, this is our personal time we hang out. So it's okay for me to get up to give my dog more water. You get more water. Okay. Okay. A little more water. There you go. All right. All right. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Pit bulls. I got to tell you, I have met so many pit bulls in the neighborhood. They are the sweetest dogs. Thank you, Christy. I have only met one pit bull that was trouble. The rest of them, they are like the biggest, nicest puppies. Oh, my God. The nicest puppies. Thank you, Colleen. I appreciate that. I'm kind of amazed, I mean, as far as like how nice they are. So surprising, but you know. Um, mom has not called Annette. I mean, I mean, mom called. I talked to mom earlier today. She did not call tonight. But it works because now that I've got my new iPad, no longer does mom's call interrupt. See, I've gotten, for you all, I've gotten very uh, fancy now. I've got my, of course, my dining room table has turned into a recording studio, but you know, I've got this mic, I've got this mic, my big light, my arm for my phone occasionally, but now that I've got the iPad, it makes it much easier <clears throat> because this also means now when I want to look stuff up, I can actually look stuff up, which is great, you know, so makes it a little easier. So, um, anyway, y'all. Exactly, y'all. Exactly, Nathan. I do say you all. I learned to say you all here in the uh, on the in the East Coast. Uh, well, not East Coast, Washington D.C. Because Washington is very much between the North and the South in America, so you get some Southern influences. 
I have a phone cover. I don't love my phone cover though. I mean, I liked it because it's it's the universe or whatever. But then in person, it's not as nice as I thought. But what do you do? Um. But yes, yeah, so we say you all here is the nice way of saying it. Whereas in Chicago, I'll say you all, and it means nothing to people. Use guys. Use guys. You guys. I would say you guys. I wouldn't say use guys. That's very Chicago. I'd say you guys. Um. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, yeah. The pit bull, I'm telling you, the pit bulls I've met have been just big, wonderful, sweet puppies. I met one with a woman today. Actually, she was saying, she was saying how the uh, oh, Sasha wants to go out again. Oh, not raining yet. Oh, just starting to frizzle though. All right, Let's see if she wants to be out there. But she was saying how her dog. I said, is he is he like a big defender? She goes, not at all. Like he won't bark at anybody, but. Because he's a pit bull, everybody crosses the street to get away from him. You know, so basically, if they only knew, but nobody's going to mess with a pit bull, you know, but they are. They're, they're the sweetest, they're sweet, the Swedish, they're the sweetest animals that I've found. Um, Vlad Dibriansky. No, who is that, Annette? I don't know who that is. Um, Jay. Oh, that's funny. Oh, no, that's an interesting idea. Oh, you done? Okay. Yeah, you're right. Getting a, I mean, Jay says, get a cover you can see in couch cushions. Now, that's true. That's true. Something that, like, contrasts with what else I've got. You know, that's true. Um, oh, the pities are total lovers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, Link above. Although I can't access links on uh, on the program I use to pull of, all of you guys together. I can't even copy them. It's kind of annoying. It's the one downfall of this program that I can't actually copy links from it. Oh, hello, Austria. You're at the border of Ukraine recently. Oh, interesting. We're actually closing up here soon. I apologize. We've been going for like an hour and 45 minutes. So we sort of stopped talking about all the all the war stuff, and now we're talking puppies <laughs> um, at the border. Interesting. What strange? What strange things were happening at the border with Ukraine? I don't know what your other account is. Didn't mean to cut you off. Um, if you want to tell me your other account before we sign off on here, I will try to unmute it or whatever. Um. My family is from Southern Greece mostly, although even that, like the most famous branch of our family, like the strongest branch are the Arvanitika. So there were, so we're, you know, we're from up North near Albania back from 1700 and earlier, but otherwise we're Southern Greece. Beep, 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 beep. Oops, sorry. Just saying the, uh... mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I was curious to hear more of what Flouch had to say about being near the border there. Uh, oops, put on my, sun, my, my sunglasses, my glasses, so I can read the YouTube better. It's funny, I used to need these for YouTube. Now with TikTok, I can see what you guys write easily, and for YouTube, I need them. Uh... Oh, that would be nice. I agree. Actually, I agree with that, Harvey. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, I'm not sure what it would be. Harvey is saying once everything settles down, we should try organizing some kind of award reward for Vlad. He's done such amazing work. I agree. I'm not sure what it would be, um, you know, because I mean, I think I think now he's OK with money, which is good. There was that initial period that he was in trouble because he couldn't get paid by his employers because everything was shut down. He had to go cross country with his family and then had to pay for housing, but had no money to pay. And it was the whole disaster there. Whereas now I think that's fine. So we'd have to think of what that would be. But I know he's just put a lot of, he even gave me some updates that I've got to do. He gave me new video. I think I was telling you guys in photos of the uh, delivery of the food of the second car to Kharkiv, which I've got to put together. But he's been doing so much of that stuff, but he wants to, but I know it's been stressful that it'd be nice. I just don't know what it is that we, you know, what do you get somebody in Ukraine? A Bayraktar? I mean, what, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I just don't know what to, what to get him. I mean, 
I mean, he could set up the Amazon. I, I've got to mention the Amazon thing to him again. I will mention it again because we had talked about it, you know. You know, tell him just to put some stuff up there for his family and kids and everything else. Greece, well, it depends. There are, you could be, you can, there are some villages where there's snow in the winter and skiing in Greece. So it can be. Um, I was in Athens once at Christmas and it snowed, which I was very surprised. So it can, but Greece is still Southern Europe. So, you know, and surrounded by the Mediterranean. So in principle, you know, it should be a little warmer. But but again, we had snow in Athens, which I was very surprised. It was kind of neat for a day, but it was still very cool. Um, um, oh, daily updates you're saying. Hold on. Now I've got to see who this – oh, there you go, Vlad. I'll write the names down and look it up. Vlad Dubryansky. Look at him. He's a duh. <laughs> Fancy. Dubryansky. All right. I will Google and see. Um, exactly. The Bayraktar for Vlad. Oops. Yep. There we go. Uh, all right, guys. I'm going to call this short in a minute here. Grace is great. Yeah, I haven't been in a long time. <clears throat> I need to go back. <clears throat> Oh, I mean, there's lots of news going on. We're not talking news right now, though. This is the end of the show. We were just hanging out and trying to relax a little bit. Exactly, Christy. Thank you. When Christy gives me the little sleeping thing, it means it's time. All right, guys, I am going to sign off. Now, I never know once I sign off, does it? St I know on TikTok, obviously, the chat disappears. On YouTube, do you guys get kicked out of the chat when I sign off? Or does it let you stay in chat longer? Okay, thanks, Annette. I've always wondered that. Like, as soon as I hang up on, on YouTube, I mean, on YouTube, on, you know, YouTube, et cetera, do you guys, I know you lose the picture, but on YouTube, do you actually get kicked out of the chat or can you keep chatting? Thank you, Frate. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was cute. A video in Toronto Greek Festival, I know. I haven't been to Toronto. I need to go to Toronto and Montreal. Been dying. That's another place I've been dying to go, both of those places. Um. No, thank you, Andrea. I appreciate that. Or Andrea, as I would say it from the Midwest, but I'm living out east, so I'm saying Andrea. Um, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. The chat goes on. Oh, good. The chat goes on. Well, that's – oh, somebody else says kicked oh, – well, and that you're kicked off because you're on Facebook. Correct. But for the YouTube folks to check it, oh, that's nice to know at least, and maybe a little creepy too, <laughs> that when I go away, you're all you're all still conniving there. <laughs> like evil UN employees, but we won't talk about that. We don't talk about Bruno. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. As soon as I start seeing the multiple goodbyes on TikTok, I know you guys have caught up so I can say goodbye, so I can finally turn it off. YouTube, I know you guys are quicker. So if I say goodbye to you, I know it's happening within a couple seconds. So goodbye, everybody, tomorrow, Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. Only the Americans know what that means. Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time, U.S., midnight Paris time, Paris. All right. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. À demain.